Hey everyone, this is lecture number eight, our last lecture for Remix Music, Art, and Culture. Uh, this week I'll be covering some basic takeaways for the course, reviewing uh, what we've gone over and uh, what, basically summarizing uh, what we've been through. Uh, your tasks for week eight, if you haven't finished reading Reality Hunger, you may want to do that. Uh, there is no uh, official post this week that you're not required to do a post and you're not required to participate in discussion. Those scores are finalized. Uh, but if you want to write a post, uh, it would be nice to have other people post their final thoughts about Remix. Uh, and if you want to continue, contribute to discussion, uh, your classmates have put up their proposals for their final projects and those need some comments. It would be great if there were some comments on there from people other than me. Uh, finally, your final remix project is due Sunday by 10 p.m., uh, so please don't forget to submit that to the drop the uh, uh, Google Drive folder. So again, your assignments this week, uh, optional post, uh, on final thoughts on remix, uh, and also discussion. If you want to contribute to discussion, please uh, give people some feedback on their proposals uh, and their final thoughts, perhaps. Remix project again is due on Google Drive by Sunday at 10 p.m. You can find the prompt in the week seven folder. I'll, I'll copy it over to the week eight folder so it's not confusing. Uh, but nothing's changed. I, we talked about that last week. So if you have any questions about that assignment or how to complete it, uh, please either send me an email or post something in the support section on, on Google+. Uh, finally, I, I ask you to check your grades sometime, uh, pr preferably earlier in the week. Uh, if you go on Blackboard, uh, you should have uh, grades for all your assignments uh, up to this point, uh, including your discussions, your posts, your major projects, all of that should all be there. Uh, and it should give you a weighted total. <clears throat> uh, if you, if, if you uh, look in the feedback on the, po on the uh, discussion for the week, uh, I put in there the date and content of any comment that you added to the, the course discussion. Uh, so that's what I'm basing those scores off of. If if you go back and you find something that I forgot to include, please let me know so I can uh, update your score. But I think uh, everything up there is as accurate as it as I know it to be. <clears throat> so if you go on there and you find something's missing or there's something that uh, you don't agree with or I forgot to do something uh, or you have a question about uh, your score, maybe it's lower than you want it to be, uh, Send me an email. Uh, earlier in the week's the better. Again, my grades are going to be due a week from today, uh, next Monday. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be turning around your Remix projects pretty quickly. So the sooner you can get uh, give me a heads up about what needs to be checked in the grades, the better. I want to take some time to, to speak broadly about uh, what we've covered in the course so far. Uh, this is going to be short because uh, I'm sure you all want to get onto your remixes. And in fact, I, I didn't give any put any content uh, in the course this week because I wanted you all to have plenty of time to find your texts and start arranging them and, and clipping things together and, and make the best remix project you can. Uh, so today, just a short review rather than a full lecture introducing new concepts. So over the course of the semester, uh, a couple of things that I hope uh, you are going to come away with. Uh, first of all, is that a remix as a as a concept has really long roots, uh, going back to the era of photographic reproduction. Remember, we read the Benjamin piece and then uh, Berger's reprisal of it, uh, where they're thinking through some of the significance and impact of easily reproducible culture uh, available to everyone and uh, able to be recontextualized at will. We looked through avant-garde montage practices, cutting pasting practices that became uh, uh, an avant-garde aesthetic at the turn of the century. Uh, we talked about uh, the remixes, the dub remixes uh, that really uh, came up, that, that really uh, founded the, the term remix, uh, which has now become uh, ubiquitous in contemporary culture uh, to the point that it's, it's uh, a concept that can describe all sorts of uh, mundane or banal everyday activities uh, as uh, Lev Manovich says that the cut and paste techniques that were once avant-garde montage are now the basic operations that you use uh, when you operate a computer. So from Remix's Long Roots, uh, we also learned that Remix has both aesthetic, aesthetic and political 
uh, relevance. And it's fundamentally anti-tradition because it's anti-history. Just think of uh, Duchamp uh, drawing a mustache on the Mona Lisa, for example. Um, but because it's able to decouple uh, from tradition and, and from historical context, uh, there's also the possibility of cultural appropriation uh, or misappropriation, as we discussed with several uh, contemporary examples. Uh, and I think that the recent examples in, in pop culture have, are so enlightening because they, they suggest uh, that we've gotten to a point where uh, folks generally don't see any problem with taking from uh, anywhere. You know, we talked at length on the forums about Miley Cyrus, and you know, regardless of what you think about uh, her music or, or the implications of her uh, adoption of black culture, hip-hop culture, uh, I'm sure there's nothing malicious in uh, her intent, and yet her willingness and ability to uh, mix that into her version of uh, pop music, and in all of these examples, uh, illustrates sort of where we've come to, where we've come to in, in a remix culture, where pretty much everything is up for grabs. That all speaks to sort of the mainstream, as well to the mainstreaming of remix uh, as a cultural practice. This is we see it kind of everywhere now, uh, and applied to all sorts of things, not just music, but also uh, different kinds of art practices, different kinds of even just banal media use, like curating an iPod playlist and so on. Which has raised questions about whether or not a remix even has a critical faculty anymore. Uh, and then we moved on to uh, the David Shields and DJ Spooky, who both suggested that uh, basically there's no looking back from uh, where we've come with uh, remix, that, that we've reached a point of no re return where there is just so much culture, uh, so, so ubiquitously available and so easily reproducible, that there isn't a possibility of thinking outside this paradigm, or or at least they weren't uh, imagining uh, a different kind of reaction. They suggested either you can look backwards uh, to a tradition, a traditional model, uh, and <clears throat> David Shields, for example, suggested that you could look backwards to a traditional model and be out of date, or uh, find ways to incorporate uh, remix culture into uh, more traditional practices for him, you know, you know, writing or, or literary production, for example. Uh, but if we follow what DJ Spooky argues, that we all have a multiplex consciousness now, uh, where at any time anyone could speak through us, uh, just based on uh, how much media we come in contact, how much uh, prepared uh, cultural content we uh, experience on a daily basis, uh, then we, you really only have one choice. Uh, and to use this term, terminology, do you want to be an idiot or do you want to be a DJ? Uh, do you want to be the person with no identity uh, through which uh, culture speaks <clears throat> almost without filter? Uh, or do you want to be a DJ who uses a logic of selection uh, to craft their experience and personality through what's, avi what's available, uh, available to them? And so I think that ultimately that's the main takeaway for the course uh, that I hope you'll leave here with, not only a rich understanding of what remix means in a larger cultural sense as a, a cultural practice with, with a long history and uh, some uh, real stakes attached to it, uh, but also what remix might mean uh, for you as you go forward as, as a consumer of culture. Really what this adds up to is, is a recognition of how valuable our attention is uh, in the contemporary moment with so many sources seeking to gain our attention, we really have to uh, make people work for it. Uh, give us the kinds of media experiences or have media uh, content that speak through us, uh, be something that says something meaningful, uh, that says something uplifting, uh, and w with a recognition of history and culture and the value of the, the people who are consuming it. so that's it for this week. Oh, that says week seven, but it's week eight. So again, finish uh, the Shields if you haven't. There's optional post your final thoughts on Remix, and please contribute to discussion. Help people uh, get some feedback on their proposals and their final thoughts. Your Remix project is due Sunday at 10 p.m. Again, uploaded to Google Drive. If you have any questions or problems with that, 
please email me as soon as you can uh, so I can uh, work with you to get everything sorted out. Lastly, I want to thank you all for taking this course and for all the work you've done over the course of the term. This was, a, this was an experimental course. Uh, I told you at the beginning of the semester, uh, the first time I ran it, the first time I've done an online course. Uh, and I think it was a really uh, a big success uh, on both fronts. Uh, you all uh, really threw yourselves at these texts and made this a really stimulating term. Uh, this was some hard stuff on the cutting edge of, of digital media theory. Uh, some difficult theories, some difficult texts. But you all managed to come up with innovative ways to read the material and apply it to stuff that was going on uh, in life outside the course. Uh, Use some examples I never would have thought of uh, and really made this overall a, a really thought-provoking uh, study into Remix. So I thank you for that. Uh, this experiment I think has gone really well. I'm going to see if I can expand this course into something that can be offered uh, on campus during the regular term. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to teach it again as an online course now that I have all these materials developed. Uh, but again, thank you so much because it, this wouldn't have worked if you all uh, hadn't uh, thrown yourself at these texts the way that you did. If you're a graduating senior, congratulations. Uh, good luck out there in the real world. Uh, don't be a stranger. When you come back to Loyola, come by and say hello. Uh, and if you're still uh, on campus, you still have a couple more courses to finish. Uh, maybe I'll see you around campus. Uh, maybe I'll have you another course. Uh, in any case, uh, have a great summer, and I'll see you soon.